much. Uh, I really want to thank you for organizing this conference. Uh, I actually am not the youngest person here, but I am probably the newest writer on this panel. I started writing, uh, I've written all my life, but I used to write on little like pieces of paper or napkins or you know, even pieces of toilet paper sometimes. I always threw it out. Because the same, I grew up in a home where vulnerability was not, you know, you still do that? Uh, I never throw anything away. I did. I still do. I still do. <laughs> but um, uh, my writing career, if you want to put it that way, started here at the University of Calgary when uh, I went to back to school in my, in my 30s. actually started out at, in fine arts, and um, I failed what they call the effective writing test. So I had to take an English course within a certain length of time or I would get kicked out of school. So I went and took the test, and I failed, and then I had, so I went into this English class, and um, my teacher at the time, is, is she's a well-known Alberta writer, I didn't know that at the time. Her name is Aretha Van Herc. Oh. And um, I'm just going to tell a little story about how I found out something about myself uh, that, I, you know, that I was actually able to write. She, um, I think it was, a, it was, so I decided to take a full year course on, they called it, it doesn't exist anymore, but it was called composition and literature. So you got to read books and you got to learn how to write essays. And um, I think it, maybe it was the second class. She got us to everybody. We had to write an essay on those little, you know, those little exam booklets, and we had to hand it in. And then she passed it back to us a, a couple of weeks later. And when she came out, you have to know she's a very feisty person. When she came back to the classroom, she had the pack of. It was about 50 students in the class. She had the pack of exams like this, and she slammed them on her desk, and she goes. Yeah, a bunch of idiots. <laughs> she says, I don't know how you made it through high school. And I just thought, well, I'm paying for this. <laughs> but she gave us each a little recipe card back with, with her essay, and she told us, keep that, hand it in with all your assignments each time, I'll put a comment on it. Uh, and she said, what she said was, only two people in the class passed. And I get that I'm one of them. I was one of the people who, who passed. And she wrote on this little recipe card with her red writing, and it said, this is no essay, but you sure as hell can write. This is what she wrote on my thing. And I was very surprised to see that, because I, when I was a little person, I was diagnosed with um, dyslexia and other learning disabilities. And so, and I was told I was dumb, yeah. and I believed it. Yeah. And, um, but anyways, you need that too, did you? Yeah, same here. <laughs> but um, I ended up, uh, you know, completing a degree in English. I switched from fine arts to English, and I took some creative writing classes here,
talking earlier and you were talking about um, um, putting your finger in that vice and mm -hmm. having it pressed down and then it, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. But then when they take it off, <laughs> it hurts. Yeah. And what this book is covers is a part of my childhood. It's a big vice. Um, I was, uh, yeah, it was a big vice <laughs> more than one ways, but it, it, um, the, I was um, exposed to a, to a very heinous form of, of uh, ritualized abuse that they now call satanic ritual abuse. And um, one of the forms of torture that they used was to put your hands and feet in a vice and squeeze it tight until it was flat, like Bugs Bunny cartoons. And then he said, they take it off. Story. But, um, But now, um, I, writing this story opened up so many um, opportunities for me as a writer. Uh, because this one, they actually kind of had me pegged as kind of a, you know, um, uh, a poor, fragile thing that wasn't really right. A victim? Yeah. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> So it was a little hard for me to continue publishing, but um, I now have uh, four books written. I am not yet, I don't think, what you could say theorized, um, but a, a scholar did recently get a hold of me and ask if she could write a feature article on my work, so that just might happen yet. And, um, but I have to say that I am uh, a very proud to be a that wasn't always the case because my mom was very ashamed of who she was. She was in the system all her childhood. She was in foster care and she was just treated like a dirty little Indian. And that's the way she grew up. And when she realized that she could call herself pure French, it made a difference for her. And when we were children, if we even asked questions about ourselves, away 20 something years ago now and it was only after her passing that I was even able to go down that, that road. I may have done it when she, if she had not passed away but it was a lot easier because I didn't want to disrespect her. And, um, and uh, I, I just wanted to say a couple of more little things about you know a hybridity you had asked <laughs> reminded of a couple of stories of this even this is the first time that I've seen in Calgary this many uh, Aboriginal writers in one place you know it's like woohoo <laughs> and um, but quite a while ago uh, when Rita Jo uh, who's a Mi'kmaq writer she passed away a couple of years ago and she had put out her final book uh, Songs of Rita Jo and I can't remember it might have been around 2000 and she came here and she said, this is my last time I would do a tour. But she stayed at my house. And I was so honored to have her stay at my house. She stayed in my, in my bedroom. One morning she comes down the stairs and she has this book with her. I don't know where she found it. She must have seen it on a bookshelf. Picked it up. She read it that night. And she comes down in the morning, puts the book on the table and she goes, my girl, she says, is this your life? And I go, me all kinds of really nice things about myself but I didn't really believe and, um, because it was hard for me to hear good things about myself and um, but that's really not what I wanted to talk about and what I wanted to say was when my son came over to help drug, you know we took her around to her readings and when we were coming back from one of her readings it was snowy outside it was cold and so he was helping her walk up the walkway 
my next door neighbor came out. She was a Newfoundlander. She still is. And she comes outside and she she says to, to she goes up to Rachel Joe and she looks at her and she says, she says, you look like you got a little bit of Indian in you. <laughs> and Rita Joe says, I am 100% Mi'kmaq Indian. And she goes, oh, yeah, don't say. <laughs> and my son says, yes, and she's famous. She's a famous writer. And, um, um, and so she says, the neighbor says, she says, oh, can I go get my camera? Can I get your picture with me? And so she does do that. But then, um, um, in more recent history, I was uh, teaching at a, a college here in Calgary called Mount Royal College, and one and I taught in what they call the AEP or the Aboriginal <coughs> Education Project. I also taught in the mainstream program. So I was in the English department one day, waiting to use the photocopy machine, and this woman came in the room. <coughs> there was a lineup. And this woman had done her PhD here. I knew her from, from the program. <coughs> and she comes up to me and she says, oh, she says, you're teaching here? And I go, yeah, I'm doing a session on teaching. She says, well, what are you teaching? And I told her, I'm teaching in the AEP. I'm teaching uh, English classes there. And, uh, and uh, she says, oh, well, she says, I taught there. And she says, um, uh, well, all I can tell you is you're going to be really disappointed. And she says, and, uh, but just, just whatever you do, just set your expectations low, <laughs> and then you won't be disappointed, <laughs> she says to me. And I said to her, oh, I said, I've been teaching there for quite a while now, and I love it, I told her. I'm a Métis, I said to her. And she goes, oh, really? She says, oh, I'm so sorry. And then she runs out of the room. <laughs> 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 